Now this village in northern Thailand is unusual in that it's separated into two sections. The lower section is Thai and the upper section is Lisu. And what separates the two is this, which is a reservoir. Now this means that the Thais living below the reservoir get water all year through to irrigate their fields and they have fantastically productive rice three times a year. If you are above the reservoir, you can't see it but it's up in the trees there, that's the Lisu section and if you need that water you've got to pump it out at great expense. So that's a major problem. So here's the rice in the lower part of the village. As you can see, it's rich and green and fertile with the hills in the background. And this is the height of the dry season. Now, if you compare that with hill tribe fields, which we'll do in a minute, you'll see quite a difference. Right, I've walked about a hundred meters from those lush green fields of the ties in the lower part of the village and now I'm turning around looking the other way and I'm looking at the fields of the hill tribes and what a difference. These fields are on steep slopes, thin soil, very easily eroded, nutrients lost and the quality of the rice and the quantity of the rice is very inferior. It's easy to see why two main reasons. One is that the Thais arrived here first. They settled here about a thousand years ago from uh, southern China, moving across the Mekong. So they were here first, so they got the best land, and they're the majority group. There's 60 million Thais in Thailand, over 60 million, and there's only about 40,000 Lisu estimates vary. So they're a very much a minority group and they end up with the worst land. In fact the land is so bad now that they make most of their income by other means as we'll see later. This is Don Lung. That's a Lisu village of about 800 people 50 or so kilometers outside Chiang Mai. Now the Lisu are one of the seven main ethnic minority groups in Thailand. There are about 600,000 in Myanmar, about 700,000 in China and only about 40,000 in Thailand. Now the Lisu are a very independent bunch of people. They don't, they don't pay much attention to what the authorities tell them to do. They are a law unto themselves. And their women are noticed and are notable for being very strong-willed and self-disciplined. Now anybody can become a Lisu. All you have to do is to marry into the Lisu clan or the Lisu group and then you become a member of that clan. Now, because the Lisu come from originally from China uh, or Tibet, the edge of the Himalayas, and moved down here through Chinese territory, there's a lot of Chinese influence in, in Lisu culture, as you can see by the decorations around the door and the, and the red pom-poms and all the displays on this house. So a decap. Now, here's a typical Lisu home. Um, built of split bamboo with a corrugated iron roof, one level, dirt floor, very very simple. Nowadays a lot of the more affluent Lisu are building uh, much more uh, modernistic uh, houses but this is the traditional Lisu house and because these people used to be semi-nomadic moving the villages every 20 years or so when the land around them was worn out of nutrients the buildings needed to be simple because they had to be moved every 
15 years or so. This is the uh, village shaman, who is the man in the village who can uh, contact the spirit world, and he's also a bit of a Lisu musician. And this, he's playing the Lisu banjo, and behind him are some of the handicrafts that are made in the village. Now this is Mr. Jaka who is the shaman, that is the uh, person in the village who communicates with the spirit world and um, I'd like to ask him a few questions if that's okay. Um, what, what is your job in the village, what do you do for the village and how did you become a shaman? <laughs> So they believe in God? They're God. And, and, and it's God is on the, the altar. And Daniel, wherever I use time to clean it now, I tell me I will be buying them my how to share if it could not come to my children. The next one will be someone who is younger than 30 years. Okay. And it have to be the same plan. Okay, right, that's the next question. How many clans are there in the same clan? Okay, right, that's what I thought. Um, Oh, Apamo. 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 Can, can you tell me who is Apamo? Um, can, can you ask him how, what does he think about people in the village, in this village, who are not, who are Christian or Buddhist, who have changed their religion? A Christian. So nobody's left. But can you be Buddhist and Christian and still respect the shame? So this is the spirit altar which is at the back of most houses. But this is special because it's the shaman's house. Uh, on the left side of the altar are the spirits of the ancestors of the family who live in the house. On the right side are there are many cups which are to the spirits of uh, the shaman himself, which means the spirits of the forest and the spirits of the fields and the spirits of the rivers and the rocks and the village. And so that's why there are so many cups here to celebrate all those spirits and uh, incense sticks are burnt uh, to um, respect them and above the village and every Lisu village looking down there will be a shrine to the god of the Lisu Apamo can't see him because of the trees but we'll go up there and have a look outside and then later we'll have a look inside and there it is above the village the shrine or should we call it the temple to Apamo who looks after and takes care of all the people of the village according to their shamanistic traditions Okay, so now we're at the shrine of uh, Apamo, who is the most important spirit in the, in the Lisu pantheon of spirits. He's their 
closest to a monotheistic god, although behind his shrine there are many shrines to his uh, junior um, junior gods. Now the uh, this is the centerpiece of the shrine, and the uh, paper umbrellas tell Apamal that people are visiting him regularly, and the same goes for the incense sticks. So from here, we can see some of the junior spirits, which you could describe as the spirits of nature, who assist Apamal. And there's one here. Which you can see very clearly, and one behind him in a little wooden stockade. And there's a number of other spirits around protecting the village and were working under Apamo, the god of the village. So, this is the very, very holy part of the village. Yeah, so now um, Mr. Jacka is showing us some chicken bones which he can use to, for various um, reasons to describe if marriages are going to be successful, but it's better that he tells us in, in Lisu. ซึ่งไม่อยากอยู่เนี่ยอะไรเยอะจะได้อะไรเยอะจะได้ไม่ไปไปเอาอะไรเยอะจะได้เนี่ยมองไม่อยากอ้อมมาสั่งเจ้า
But many people, even though they may have changed their religion in name, still follow the old beliefs. All right, for the Lisu people, uh, wealth is measured in how much silver you've got. And they make the most fantastic silver costumes, including this silver jacket here that this young lady is wearing to show you. Okay, and they make it in the village, so uh, in a second I'll just show you them actually producing the silver. So here's a silver making factory with a lady clipping out little bits of silver and making them into the beads that get made into the jackets that you just saw a little while ago. I think you can see there. And it's a, a real village industry and very important. Especially when these costumes are worn at uh, Lisu New Year, which is around the time of Chinese New Year, which is usually in early February. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kerbumu. <laughs> That's thank you in Lisu. So here's one of the jackets. Can we see the silver clips there? Yeah. And uh, they take well over a month to make. And this jacket's worth uh, getting on for a thousand dollars US or maybe even more. So, very important to the people. Now, there are two things particularly that the Lisu prize as a measurement of their wealth, and one of them is silver which we'll see uh, during the dancing and we've seen some already and the other one is uh, is pigs and here are some uh, Lisu pigs many of these will be sacrificed for the New Year festival and also they're sacrificed for weddings and for funerals and for any major event in the life of the Lisu are we going? So which is more important now in the village? Making making textiles and silver or farming? <laughs> So this is the finished product, uh, belts and uh, bags and jackets and hats in these very bright Lisu colours, which you can buy all over Thailand and probably in other parts of the world. Okay, so Kunchurai? Ale. Ale, okay. And um, so one e ben pi my lisu. Me chai ma chu paka. Chu paka do it. Me chu lisu la go chu tai chai mai. So chi lis chu lisu lai. Chu lisu chu ale ale pa. Ale pa. Okay. Me la bel tu mo ma tu lisu. So kun kun ba kun tam gan tin e ra tam gan kang no. But at the moment everybody is eating and drinking and this morning they went up to the shrine of Apamo and uh, they paid their respects and made offerings to him a bit like Harvest Festival in England and all these young people here. So, King Kaupi said, when he may? King Nalai. Mu. Mu Majak Mu Ban, shall I? King. King Lian Lisu. Jin. Ahan Lisu. Ahan Lisu. Benalai, Ben. Mu Rago. Mu Rago. 
้วข้าหมูข้าหมูทอดหมูผักกาดแล้วแตกเขาเออโอเคตุยพวกหาเลยOf Dong Luong, Lisu Village, and we're here for the New Year Festival. And today, tonight is the last night, and we're going to see some Lisu dancing and hear some Lisu music. So, what happens at New Year, which is the beginning of February, is the same as the Chinese New Year. What happens is that every house puts a tree like this or a branch and makes it look pretty with lights. And then, and then a group of girls will dance around every household tree outside each house, each one bringing good luck to the family for the next year. Okay, so that's the that's the end of the New Year festival for the Lisu. And there are also a lot of fireworks, which you can probably hear. Okay, hey, get this right. เออนึกเหรอBy the shaman outside every family in the village to bring good luck for the next year.